Thank you very much, Randy. And right back to our phone callers next up is Karen listening in Nashville, Tennessee. Hi, Karen. Hey, hey, Mr. Hanacraft. Thank you for taking my call. My pleasure. Go with my little granddaughter died to help me through the death. Hmm. Uh, but now my mother has passed, and so um, I'm still wondering, like, um, like I keep hearing people say that the and I read that the dead know nothing, and and when Lazarus died, he didn't know anything, and Jesus said he was just asleep. So um, I just need to understand, if, are they in the presence of the Lord, and are they uh, somewhat conscious, or what yeah. really happens? Why was Lazarus just dead? Yeah, well, a, a couple of things. One of the things that we know for certain, and it's interesting that you mentioned Lazarus, there's a couple of Lazaruses that we could talk about. But there's a Lazarus in Luke chapter 16. And when he died, the biblical text says the angels carried him to Abraham's bosom or paradise. Abraham's bosom or paradise are two metaphors, both of which point to the same living reality. And that is that Lazarus had conscious awareness in the presence of God. So the church has always taught both by oral and written tradition, that when we die, we're absent from the body, present with the Lord. Which is to say, when a woman gives birth to a human being, she doesn't give birth just to a body, but she gives birth to a body-soul unity. When you die, there's an unnatural rending of the body and the soul. The soul, or the non-physical part of humanity, goes to be with the Lord and enjoys the presence of the Lord. Not only the presence of the Lord, but those who have departed, who are in that great cloud of witnesses. Remember Hebrews 12 saying, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw everything off that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, looking unto Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith. So the idea here in biblical theology is that you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. And that state of bliss, and it really is bliss, it's actually better than what we're experiencing now, that state of bliss continues on until the time that Jesus appears a second time. When he does, the soul returns to the body. So the non-physical as aspect of humanity returns to the body, and the body is resurrected. 1 Corinthians 15 says this, immortal, imperishable, incorruptible. And then we forever live as resurrected human beings with those who are resurrected in a renewed universe, now the universe groans in travail, awaiting its liberation from bondage to decay, but then it will be liberated, and we ourselves will live in a renewed universe. So paradise lost becomes paradise restored. That's the grand meta-narrative of Scripture. So all of that to say, with two losses, you can have a tremendous amount of hope. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tanagraph. Do you understand that? Yeah, I just—I guess I'm just confused when it says. I guess when it says the dead knows nothing. I guess you mean they're in a state of comfort, but they're not. They don't know anything here, but they are in a state of comfort. Is what you're saying too? Well, right? the the Ecclesiastes passage sometimes I think it's Ecclesiastes nine five that you're quoting, but that passage sometimes is used to say that the dead know nothing, but not in terms of awareness in the eternal state. It has been interpreted, I think misinterpreted, to mean uh, that they know nothing, uh, period. That they also do not know what's going on in the land of the living. Uh, the earliest church traditions teach us that the saints that have gone on before are the great cloud of witnesses that I referenced from Hebrews chapter 12. They not only know, have conscious awareness, and know one another, the saints that have already preceded us, but they're in the presence of the Lord, but they also know what's going on in this time-space continuum. Again, that's debated in Christian circles, but what is not debated is that they have conscious awareness in the presence of God. 
So they are enjoying the presence of God. And again, I gave you an apt illustration from Luke chapter 16.